Hello and welcome to Ember's Reading Room and the not going to end anytime soon continuing saga of my bedtime book of two minute stories edited by Rosemary Garland illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. You will not give up on this book because it's awesome. <laughs> Today's stories are Sammy Squirrel's Happy Christmas and Clucky the Hen Who Liked to Wander. Another double header. They are both by Margaret Connor. Sammy Squirrel's Happy Christmas. Uh oh. This story references Christmas and it's not Christmas time. What would Disney do? They'd move it to a different date and completely mess up the order. <laughs> DuckTales, cough, DuckTales. Sammy Squirrel was busy collecting nuts to store away for the winter. When winter comes, there will be no nuts left on the trees, he told Mr. Pixie, who was looking for wood for his fire. I thought you slept all through the winter, Sammy, said Mr. Pixie. Lots of people think that. But I don't, said Sammy. I sleep quite a lot, but on sunny days, when the weather is a little bit warmer, I wake up. Then I feel hungry, so I take a few nuts from my store and have a nice meal. I see, said Mr. Pixie. Well, goodbye. I hope you'll find a lovely lot of nuts for your store. Sammy did. When Mr. Pixie passed by with his wheelbarrow on the way home, Sammy had a huge pile of nuts. You have found a lot of nuts. You must feel pleased, Sammy, said Mr. Pixie. Sammy wasn't pleased. He was worried, because while he had been busy collecting his nuts, all the other squirrels had filled the best storing places. There's nowhere left for mine, he cried. Mr. Pixie put down his wheelbarrow. He hadn't been lucky in finding much wood because all the other pixies had gathered it before him. I have a place to store my wood, but not much wood to store it in, he said. Then he cried, Sammy, I've had an idea. Why don't you store your nuts in my woodshed? You could sleep in the box on the shelf above. Nobody would disturb you because nobody goes in there but me. I would always creep in very quietly. Sammy thought it a wonderful idea. So together they loaded the nuts onto Mr. Pixie's wheelbarrow and off they went. When they reached his woodshed, they put the wood in one corner and the nuts in the other and Sammy climbed up to the box on the shelf into which Mr. Pixie kindly put leaves and grass to make him a comfortable bed. He soon went off to sleep and whenever Mr. Pixie came into the shed for some wood, he crept in quietly so as not to wake him. Then one day, Mr. Pixie came for some wood and found there was none left. He was upset. It's Christmas Day, and I cannot have a fire to sit by and have my dinner, he cried. He had not realized he'd spoken aloud. But Sammy happened to be awake, and he heard him. Look in my corner. You will find plenty of wood for your fire, he said. There was indeed. Every time Sammy had taken a feed of nuts, he'd drop the nutshells on the floor. You can burn them on your fire, said Sammy. Mr. Pixie was grateful. He filled a basket with the shells, and together with a few twigs and fir cones he happened to find, he soon made a beautiful fire. Come and have Christmas dinner with me, he called to Sammy. Sammy was pleased. He'd never been to Christmas dinner with anyone before. He brought some of his nuts, and Mr. Pixie gave him some cherries from a jar. I've heard squirrels like cherries, he smiled. What a happy day they had together. We must do this again next year, laughed Mr. Pixie. I would like that, smiled Sammy. Cute fun little story. And I definitely recognize this art style. Even though it's another color drawing, just speaking about the way the faces look and the squirrels look reminds me a lot of some of the other drawings we've seen from this artist. And I'm probably gonna be using this one right here for the cover image. <laughs> Though what's really interesting is this wheelbarrow looks slightly different in style than the other parts of the drawing because it's got more outlines and more definition in certain parts. Also, the wheelbarrow looks like it's in a much more springtime setting because you have a butterfly and a snail and flowers in bloom. Such a cute little story. <laughs> what are your thoughts? That's cute. Another one I don't really remember. I mean, come on, you got a pixie and you got a squirrel. That's not to like. Yeah, but they're both very nice. Mm -hmm. We have a poem. <laughs> mm -hmm. Ballet shoes are soft and slippery, made to point the toes so prithly. Football boots are hard and rough, made to play a game that's tough. That's cute, and we got ballet shoes at the top and... Soccer cleats at the bottom. Because, <laughs> mm. you know... American football, American soccer, yeah, no. 
a lot of gender bias there because the top with the ballet shoes is pink and the bottom with the football boots is blue. I still find it funny that through most of history, pink was actually a male color because it was nice and strong. Yeah, it's like, when and how do these changes come about and why? Because pink did used to be a highly masculine color and now it's like... The most girliest thing ever. Mm -hmm. Which isn't a problem. No, it's just interesting the changes over time. Okay, next story. Clucky, the hen who liked to wander. Clucky the hen liked to wander. Anywhere, everywhere she'd go. She didn't care where she went as long as it wasn't into her nest box in the hen house to lay eggs. Cluck, she'd say to the other hens, I'm not wasting my time laying eggs. You'll be sorry, the other hens clucked after her one day when she squeezed through a hole in the hedge and ran off into the wood. Take care. Clucky thought they said, take hair. Perhaps I will, she said to herself. He would be company for me and he wouldn't want to talk about laying eggs all day long. I'll go and look for him. She didn't find hair, but she met Fox. <laughs> You're a nice looking hen, said Fox. Do you really think so? asked Clucky. Yes, said Fox, coming a bit nearer. Nice enough to eat. Oh no, said Clucky hastily. I'm not all that nice. Well, I like you, said Fox. Where are you going? I'm off to find hair, said Clucky. I'd like to find hair. I'll come with you, said Fox. <laughs> Have you any idea which hole he might live in? Hares don't live in holes. You're thinking of rabbits. Hares live in the long grass, said Clucky. Now that's interesting, said <laughs> Fox, <laughs> with an artful gleam in his eye. There's some long grass over there. Let's go and see if Hare is anywhere about. Hare was dozing in the long grass. But when he heard Clucky clucking away, he peeped out and saw Fox, and he took a big leap and bounded away through the wood. Now there's only you and me, cried Fox, grinning. He opened his mouth wide and showed all his big teeth. Clucky was scared. It's not true, she cried. There are lots of rabbits in the wood. But they are safely down their holes, said Fox. There are some squirrels, said Clucky. They are all safely up in the trees, said Fox. Clucky was wishing she was safely back in her nest box in the hen house. She said quickly, there's Farmer's dog. Where? cried Fox, spinning around. Over there, cried Clucky as she dashed away through the wood. Fox rushed after her. She managed to scramble through the hedge just as he snapped his jaws and missed her. What a clucking she made. Luckily, Farmer's dog was on the other side of the hedge, looking for her. Farmer had taught him to search the hedge for stray hens, so he barked loudly as she scrambled through to let Farmer know he'd found her. He barked louder still when he saw Fox peering through the hedge at him. Fox disappeared down the nearest foxhole he could find. Ah, a stray hen, cried Farmer when he saw Clucky. Good dog, what should we do without you? Clucky stayed in her nest box in the hen house for the rest of the day. When at last she came out, she'd laid three eggs. Aren't you going to wander? The other hens asked her. I've seen all that I want to see on the other side of the hedge, said Clucky. Hmm, green this time. Mm -hmm. It's the two-tone and it's green. I would have gone with the red again because that would have worked best for Fox. It also would have worked really well for the hens, too. And the hen house. But still, it's very nicely drawn. I love the look on the fox's face. I think I'm going to be using the top of that drawing for this thumbnail. <laughs> ah, and it's a fun little tale of caution, but I think it's the classic lesson of don't go too far from your home. Don't wander, you'll be sorry. But it's also a little bit of know your place because not only don't wander off, it's get in that nest box and do your job. Hmm, apparently there's an egg outside too, unless it's supposed to be a rock. I know, it looks a lot like the other eggs that are over here, which also look like they were laid in grass rather than a nest box. I was expecting at one point when she was being scared by the fox for her to lay some eggs there, because that's a comical thing to do. So, shall I move on to the poem? The Piggy Bank What did my little piggy take? I think he has a tummy ache. 
He clanks about the house all day and even tried to run away. He must have eaten too much money. No wonder he is feeling funny. <laughs> okay. Well, tried to run away. If he's the old-fashioned type of piggy bank and he is full up of money, I'd probably try to run too. Yeah. What? Got my money. Oh, man, my bank. Remember that story, people? Mm-hmm. So this was my bedtime book of two-minute stories, edited by Rosemary Garland, illustrated by Tony Escott and Sally Wellman. Today's stories were Sammy Squirrel's Happy Christmas and Clucky, the Hen Who Liked to Wander, both by Margaret Connor. Thank you for listening. Yes, there is an entire playlist of two-minute stories and lots of other Ember's Reading Room playlists and lots of other playlists for the main channel with all sorts of different pop culture things and artwork drawn by Lux as opposed to the lovely illustrators who do all the amazing work in the various books that we read. All of them are very nicely done. I really appreciate all the work they've done. I just wish I could give proper credit to which ones did which drawings. Mm -hmm. So in case you haven't picked up a copy of this book or you want to pick up one of the other books, we do put Amazon links if we can find them in or out of print. And uh, because we can, there's also an Ebates link just for shopping, you know, because what YouTuber does a channel without some sort of little tiny promotion <laughs> or kickback or ads or something? And if we were popular enough with people, we might, like, get actual sponsors. <laughs> uh, I'd settle for keeping our ad revenue. Even though it's, like, pennies. But hey, if we get as many people as they want us to, it would actually might be a dollar per video. I don't know. <laughs> so, thanks again for listening. And standard disclaimer, Amazon and Ebates are not sponsors of or in any way affiliated with Ember's Reading Room or any content of the Lux Analysis channel.